Welcome to Workshop Topics. Specialist machines for cutting metal, wood and plastics in the home workshop. Because now I have two workshops, I do need to duplicate some of the machinery. Not the big stuff, just small items like this Proxon Micromot motor tool. And yes, I know it's not in the box because you've seen it many times before. The reason that it's not in the box is because it's clamped to a bench holder, just like the one I have in my main workshop. Here are some of the items that I would normally use in my Micromot motor tool. I bought a couple of these. These are from Dremel, and these use a system that Dremel calls Speed Click for rapid attachment of drum sanders to the drill. As you press the sanding drum onto the holder, it clicks into place and grips the drum, which is far better than the other system which uses a rubber holder that requires the tightening of a very small screw using a very small screwdriver and it's really easy to stick the screwdriver in your finger, I've done it many times. You would think I would know better by now, but no, I prefer this system. All of these tools fit neatly in the box that holds the drill. As I don't want to be opening this box all the time, I'm going to use another tool holder that's currently in my main workshop, but for now I'm going to put them in the green box and grab the other one later. I bought this reciprocating fret saw from a junk shop just inside the walls of York. I showed it in a previous video, but I couldn't demonstrate it because we were having a power cut, which ended up lasting for four hours. But now I have the electricery back again. In case you're wondering why I've blanked something out on the bench, there is a reason for this. I'll tell you in a minute after I've cut this piece of brass. This is a very thin piece of brass sheet and the blade in the machine is quite coarse. Watch what happens. This is no good at all. It looks very bad. The metal is distorted and marked. So what did I blank out on the bench? It was a plastic container and I have a lot of these that I keep bits and pieces in. But they have a very popular sweet manufacturer's name on the front. I didn't want to be accused of having sponsorship from sweet manufacturers because I definitely do not have any of that. I just forgot to remove the label. I actually bought some very fine blades but I don't think I'm going to bother using them. If I need to cut pieces of thin brass I will use this machine, the Clark Metal Worker. This is a great little machine. It wasn't very expensive. It's a guillotine, a metal bender with removable fingers so you can make boxes, and a set of bending rollers at the top. The only time I would use the reciprocating saw to cut thin metal would be for cutting out things like letters, but I've never done that in 54 years. I'm more likely to be cutting things like this. I have a very small and old bandsaw called a Burgess, and this is really good for general purpose cutting. But here I'm using the reciprocating saw with the coarse blade to cut a piece of mahogany. You may be wondering why I'm using the reciprocating saw instead of the band saw to cut this piece of mahogany, and here's the answer. While you're watching this, don't worry, your eyes aren't going funny, it's just that the vibration of the piece of wood is affecting the autofocus on the camera. My small band saw is very good, but it will not do what you see here. And the other thing is, my bandsaw will not tilt like this one does. Although I would think I will never use this scroll saw for such applications. In this clip I've re-leveled the table and I'm cutting the piece of mahogany block straight across. But this is slow, a bit inaccurate and a waste of time. Using the bandsaw is definitely the better option for chopping pieces of wood to size. And as I've just shown, the bandsaw will not do this. I would like to show that this scroll saw has an adjustable guide, health and safety at all times. So what good is this? Well, it could be a very small miniature railway tunnel entrance, or it could be a miniature skirting board complete with a mouse hole. The more I sit and look at this scroll saw, the more options become available to me. You'll see me using it in future episodes. For straight cuts on pieces of thin sheet metal, I have an option. If it's very thin sheet metal, I would use my Clark Metal Worker, as I've shown. If it's thicker metal, like this 3mm, I would use my larger metal cutting bandsaw. This Taiwanese bandsaw is very old, yet as you can see, once I clean up the piece of metal once it's been cut, it's the same thickness at each end. I'd like you to take a look at this. 
one of my favourite lathes. I've always loved Myford lathes because they're just so well made, very iconic and very stylish. This model is an ML7R that I bought recently second hand. I'm very pleased to mention that I've been asked to make a series of four videos for Myford Limited, the company that make these lathes. If everything goes to plan, I commence the filming next week. The videos will be available via the Myford website, as well as being public on YouTube. It will be a great point of reference and show the entire Myford range, and also show where they are made. They're made in a place called Mythome Royd, which is near Halifax in West Yorkshire. I'm really looking forward to this project. One of the best things about the design of the Myford for me is the tailstock. It would look very at home, bolted to a Coronation class steam locomotive. Maybe I'm a bit strange, but looking at this tailstock makes me go, what a lovely tailstock. I also have a vertical milling attachment for my Myford, although I never use it because I have a dedicated milling machine in my workshop. A lot of viewers ask me, which lathe would I recommend for a beginner? And you're looking at it, with possibly the sexiest, most stylish tailstock in the world. That's enough of that. My other workshop machinery consists of an old Boxford lathe that I've recently repainted, and a Nairock milling machine that I bought many, many years ago that works very well. Quite unlike the record drilling machine that's always been a pain. To the left of the drilling machine is the bandsaw that you've just seen me using, and that is a great piece of equipment. Not stylish in any way, but it works. Last but not least, I have a large Smart & Brown Model 1024 lathe in my workshop. This is a wonderful old tool room lathe. It's very rigid, very powerful and very accurate. Which, of course, is why I'm using it to force a piece of silicone rubber tubing which has a 5mm internal diameter onto the end of an airline fitting using plenty of oil. The external diameter of this piece of silicone rubber tubing is 10mm and here's a piece of 6mm internal diameter tubing which has an external diameter of 11mm. I'd just like to say before I go that this tubing is not recommended for airlines. That's because it's designed to be vacuum tubing for the automotive industry. But at low pressure, it's fine for running my small steam engines. I've used it for quite a long time now. And that's it for this episode. I hope you found some things of interest therein. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.